G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and welcome to part two of my Python Fundamentals series. If you haven't already watched part one, I recommend you go back and check it out. Anyway, let's get started. So we're looking at functions, methods, and packages. So functions, um, we've actually already used some functions in part one, um, so you might recognize a few of them. Um, so the syntax is typically a function with something in brackets after it, usually. I think there's some other types of functions that don't necessarily rely on this syntax. Um, but they're called by name, so usually you'll call out something specific, um, which is a good reason why you need to be careful how you name your variables. You typically want to avoid naming your variables with hot words, such as function words or class types, for example. Um, but typically you'll call on it and you'll pass an object to it. So this is an example of a function. Um, so len or the length function. So you can see here we've applied the function to two different data types. We've applied it to a list and we've also applied it to a string and we're printing the results. In the case of a list, we're getting how many items are in the list. So this is actually a list function that we'll look at later on in part three. Um, and then from here, we're also counting the number of characters in the string. Um, so in this case, we'll look at this in part four when we look at strings as well. Um, you can see here we've got uh, methods as well. So we've looked at functions. Methods are a bit different. So typically they're also called by name, but they're usually associated with an object using a full stop. Um, and they also typically have closed brackets, sometimes with arguments, sometimes without. You can see an example here um, called upper, which we apply to strings. And as you can see, we've also got lower and title, um, which we can also apply to strings as well. You can see here that we get the results of uppercase, lowercase, or title case um, through the method that's been applied to our string variable. Some methods and functions support uh, multiple fields or require multiple fields in order for them to work. You can see here that we're using a round function and applying it to a, um, a number here. And we're taking in two arguments. So we're taking in our float and we're also taking in the number of decimals which we want to round to, so our precision. I believe if you apply the round function with just the float, it will round it to the nearest whole number or nearest integer, essentially. You can also see here we're calling on a string method here, the split method. And we're taking a string and we're splitting it every time we find a full stop. But if we add the additional argument, it will say that it will only split the, no the certain number of times we specify. So in this case, I've said you're only allowed to split the string once. So you can see that we get a list which is split at the first full stop and uh, only once, and not, not full stop space, sorry. You can also call on help um, because sometimes it's really hard to know what methods are available for an object um, because we don't have the full library available for us, but it's hiding behind the scenes. So if you use a function called dir, I believe it might be short for directory, and you apply it to an object, it will expose all the available methods and attributes of that object. So you can see here, I've, I've taken a string and then I'm applying the dir function to the string and printing the result. And you can see that we get told all the available methods to this object. You can see here, we can see ones like upper, title, um, split. So that's, that's how we can sort of find these things. You can see other ones there like replace, um, r index, petition. So there's a lot of available uh, methods. And this is anything that would apply to a string, uh, specifically that string that we've applied that dir function to. This also works for libraries, which we'll look at very shortly. Um, but like pip, for example, is a library in Python. So we can import it, which I'll talk about. Um, but if we apply the dir function to it as well, it will also expose the methods available in that particular library. Methods um, can also be analyzed um, to, to review the documentation. I believe you can also review um, functions as well in some cases. Um, but if you apply dot uh, double underscore doc double underscore, and then you apply it to a particular object with a method being applied to it, you can see that we can actually see uh, documentation about the method and how it works. Um, you can see down below, in this case, we've applied it to the split function <clears throat> and it tells us all the arguments that it's expecting. So it's expecting the separating character and the maximum number of splits. <clears throat> so this can be really helpful when you're not sure what type of arguments a particular function or method will take. Um, and this can be a way to figure it out. We can actually import libraries into Python to expand its potential because people are writing um, new functions and methods for objects all the time and adding them to their own custom libraries, which expands what Python can do. Um, some libraries, depending on your IDE or your software you're using, may come with Python. So you might be able to call on some of them by default. Other ones you might need to install uh, using what's called pip. Um, but in this case, we're just going to look at, say, the math package. 
so, or the library, you can see here that all you have to do is type in import and the proper name of the package. And from there, all the methods in the math package are available. You can see here I'm calling on math.py and as a result, it's returning to me pi. Um, as well as this, you can also import libraries using what's called an alias. Um, so some packages, it's quite common to use an alias instead of typing out the full name every time you call on it. Math, usually we just call math and wouldn't give it an alias. But you can see here, I can import math as mt. And if I do this, or when I refer to math.py, I can just type nt, mt .py instead. And that package is now known as mt instead of math. As well as that, we can import specific attributes from a library. We don't have to import the entire library because when we import math, we actually import every single uh, object within that library. So that can be quite a lot sometimes. If, you, if you're just gonna use one function, it might be okay to import it um, using the from command. Keep in mind that when you use the from command, there will be some limitations with how what you've imported works. Um, but in this case, we're saying from math import pi and then all we have to just do is call on the actual uh, the actual object itself, which is pi. And we don't need to say math.py. But it's important to note, you lose what's called context when you do this. So if I say from math import pi, and then I say print math.py, you can see that it doesn't know what it's looking for because it doesn't have math. It just has the pi, the pi function itself. Um, so keep in mind that usually you need to be careful when you do this. Um, I usually only do this if I know what I'm doing. Um, otherwise, it's okay to just import the package because Python is a pretty quick language um, in terms of processing time. So it's probably okay in most cases to import the package. Here's a list of some common packages. I won't really go into each one, um, but I use these quite a lot in Python. Um, some of them are really useful, especially uh, probably NumPy or numerical Python, which lets you handle arrays. Um, Pillow, which lets you process image files, um, and OS for the operating system, which lets you deal with things like file paths. As well as this, there's some more specific packages. Uh, most of them relate to machine learning, natural language, natural language processing, and neural networks. Um, and DeLorean, for example, that's an advanced daytime package um, and Seaborn's a data visualization package. So these do more advanced things, but if you're interested in learning more about them, um, definitely Google them. There's a lot of information out there about them. Um, next in part three, we're gonna look at working with lists in Python um, and look at some common functions that we can apply to lists and how we can manage uh, various levels of data within lists themselves. Um, so hopefully I'll see you in that part. But thanks for watching part two and uh, hopefully I'll see you in, in part three. Thanks, take care.